Brickwork is masonry produced by a bricklayer, using bricks and mortar. Typically, rows of bricks, called courses, are laid on top of one another to build up a structure such as a brick wall. Brick is a popular medium for constructing buildings, and examples of brickwork are found right back through history as far as the Bronze Age. The fired brick faces of the ziggurat of ancient Duakurigal Zoo in Iraq date from around 1400 BC, and the brick buildings of ancient Mohenjo-Daro in Pakistan were built around 2600 BC. Much older examples of brickwork made with dried bricks may be found in such ancient Ancient locations as Jericho in the West Bank, Katalhuyuk in Anatolia, and Megar in Pakistan. These structures have survived from the Stone Age to the present day. Parts of brickwork include bricks, beds, and perpens. The bed is a mortar upon which a brick is laid. A perpend is a vertical joint between any two bricks and is usually, but not always, filled with mortar. The dimensions of these parts are, in general, coordinated so that two bricks laid side by side separated only by the width of a perpend have a total width identical to the length of a single brick laid transversely on top of them. An example of a coordinating metric commonly used for bricks in the UK is as follows. Bricks of dimensions 215 mm by 102.5 mm x 65 mm. Mortar beds and perpens of a uniform 10 mm. In this case, the coordinating metric works because the total width of two bricks plus a perpend of mortar is equal to the length of a single brick. There are many other brick sizes worldwide, and many of them use this same coordinating principle. Orientation A brick is given a classification based on how it is laid, and how the exposed face is oriented relative to the face of the finished wall. Stretcher A brick laid with its long narrow side exposed. Header A brick laid flat with its width to the face of the wall, or parallel to the face of the wall. Soldier A brick laid vertically with the long narrow side of the brick exposed. Sailor A brick laid vertically with the broad face of the brick exposed. Rollick A brick laid on the long narrow side with the short end of the brick exposed. Shiner A brick laid on the long narrow side with the broad face of the brick exposed, also known as a Rollick stretcher. Cut. The practice of laying uncut full-sized bricks wherever possible gives brickwork its maximum possible strength. In the diagrams below, uncut full-sized bricks are colored as follows. Stretches. A brick laid with its long, narrow side exposed. Header. A brick laid with its short side exposed. Occasionally though a brick must be cut to fit a given space or to be the right shape for fulfilling some particular purpose such as generating an offset or lap at the beginning of a course. In the diagrams below, the most commonly used cuts for generating offsets are colored as follows. 3 quarter bat, stretching. A brick cut to 3 quarters of its length and laid with its long, narrow side exposed. 3 quarter bat, heading. A brick cut to three quarters of its length and laid with its short side exposed. Half bat. A brick cut in half across its length. Queen closer. A brick cut in half down its width. Less frequently used cuts are all colored as follows. Quarter bat. A brick cut to a quarter of its length. Three quarter queen closer. A queen closer cut to three quarters of its length. King closer, a brick with one corner cut away, leaving one head a face at half its standard width. Bonding, a nearly universal rule allowing for brickwork to be stable under even modest loads is that perpens should not vertically align in any two successive courses. If this rule is observed then the force acting on any brick is distributed across a wider area in the next successive course. A second practice particularly observed in older examples of brickwork is that a building brickwork thicker than the width of any of its individual bricks. In these cases, a number of the component bricks are tied together into the depth of the wall. If, for example, a wall describing an east-west line is under construction, then bricks oriented to point north-south may be built into the width of the wall. 
their length spanning two widths of brick and tying the brickwork on the transverse plane. Historically, this was the dominant method for consolidating the transverse strength of walls. Brickwork observing either or both of these two conventions is described as being laid in one or another bond. Wall ties. The advent during the mid-20th century of the cavity wall saw the development of another method of strengthening brickwork, the wall tie. A cavity wall comprises two totally discrete walls, each one of which is called a withe or leaf. A cavity separates the two leaves so that there is no masonry connection between them at all. Typically the main loads taken by the foundations are carried there by the inner leaf and the major functions of the external leaf are to protect the hole from weather, and to provide a fitting aesthetic finish. Although the two leaves may not share the structural load, the transverse rigidity still needs to be guaranteed, and must come from some source other than interlocking bricks. The device used to satisfy this need is the insertion at regular intervals of wall ties into the cavity walls mortar beds. Thickness Brickwork is said to be one brick thick if it has a total width equal to the length of one of its regular component bricks. Accordingly, a wall of a single leaf is a wall of one half brick thickness. A wall with the simplest possible masonry transverse bond is said to be one brick thick, and so on. The thickness specified for a wall is determined by such factors as damp proofing considerations, whether or not the wall has a cavity, load-bearing requirements, and expense. Wall thickness specification has proven considerably various, and while some non-load-bearing brick walls may be as little as half a brick thick, others' brick walls will be much thicker. The Monadnock Building in Chicago, for example, is a very tall masonry building, and has load-bearing brick walls nearly two meters thick at the base. The majority of brick walls are however usually between one and three bricks thick. At these more modest wall thicknesses, Distinct patterns have emerged allowing for a structurally sound layout of bricks internal to each particular specified thickness of wall.